what's our challenge? It would be awesome if we achieve six to six H cap indicators rated in equal to ninety percent in the following domains, which is communication with nurses, responsiveness of hospital staff, hospital environment, pain management, communication about medication, and discharge information. This will mean better quality service for our patient and team members. What's our current focus? It's pain management. And when is our achieve by date? It is one twenty two eighteen. Alright, what's our target condition? It is pain um Pain assessed and education completed during admissions. Pain assessed during hourly rounding. If pain medication requested, nurse checks for and administer pain meds as ordered and or offer alternative methods. And nurse to reassess pain per policy. That's our block diagram. We also have our process characteristics, which is the increased documentation or reassessment of pain and the understanding to understand the level of pain from the patient's point of view. And our process metric is for question 13, be 100, uh, question 14, be 100%, and 22 or 22 nurses will be educated. And our outcome metrics will be uh, communication with nurses is 100, uh, hospital environment will be 90, uh, discharge info will be 100, pain management will be 95, communication about medications will be 100, and responsiveness will be 100 as well. In our current condition, what's our actual condition now? Our actual condition now is that pain uh, assessment and education not completed during all admissions, pain not assessed during hourly rounding, when pain medication requested, nurse does not check for orders, does not administer pain meds and or offer alternative methods, and nurse does not reassess pain per day. But the characteristics is that we're not documenting pain reassessments, not truly understanding the patient's pain. And then for our process metrics will be for question 13, we're currently at 100%, currently 100% for question 14, and 10 of 22 nurses that offer alternative methods, ask, for, ask the pain level, and instruct on overuse and addiction outcomes. And as far as our outcome metrics, we're at 100% for uh, communication with nurses, 92.9% .9 for hospital environment, 100% on discharge information. 91.7 for pain management and 100% on uh, communication uh, of medicines and 100% on responsiveness. So what was your last step? Donna to teach Kristen and Donna Luster the why behind, the where to find, the purpose of it, and the value and ways of alternative methods by the end of shift on 12 17 plus any of the oncoming shift who have not been educated. And what did you expect? An additional four nurses uh, should be trained by today, which was 1227, before Donna Henry leaves. And what actually happened? Okay. I'm not sure if uh, Donna completed education, and I did not ask her on Tuesday when she was here on the 21-2, if she had completed her education due to the holidays. Okay, and what did you learn? Communication between head nurse and nurse manager and chief nursing officer needs to be better since head nurses are not at at work daily and the nurse manager and CNO are. But be able to, we must be able to relay the data effectively in order to, uh, between learners to keep Kata board going. So let me intervene for a second and ask this. So our expectation was to have additionally four nurses trained. Mm -hmm. Have we accomplished that? What about the sheet? Have you looked on the sheet? We have, we have, because I've talked to Donna in between there. But because we didn't want to get hung up on that, we still wanted to keep the process going. Why well, I did that, because we were going to still work on that. Okay. In education, but I don't want to get. We didn't want to get hung up on the educational part. So okay. since you talked to her, did it yes, get done? Yes, it did. Okay, so what, can we make a, a note there uh, on yes. the uh, what happened to make sure that uh, uh, we capture the fact that oh, this has been this. Um, you know completed and that okay. we did train the four individuals. Actually, we only got to change uh, train three. Three. Okay. Okay. One was not. So let's do on what happened. Yep. On this one right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So.
So it's not about completing the PDSA cycle, but really it's about effectively removing the obstacle after we clearly understanding its DNA, right? So mm -hmm. let's don't rush and, and complete the PDSA cycle just because we have a due date. We want to make sure that we really follow through and say, okay, what else can we accomplish, you know, uh, based on the activities so, that we have going on? So if we didn't want to, since we didn't know the information, we could have just skipped these two blocks and started a different one? No, what we can do is really um, keep on building on this because okay. this is about training, right? Yes. So if we did not accomplish the training by the 27th, we then we can keep on building, it. right? And say, you know what, really, it, it's taking us a week more than we expected because okay. people were out because of the holidays and etc. Yeah, I mean, see, this actually was completed. There on you go, exactly. 12, 27, exactly. 17. And, and, this year, information. and this here <clears throat> is the date where we expect to see the impact on the obstacle. Okay. Right, not the date that we're writing the PDSA. You so, asked me that the other day. Yeah. yeah. So I really, what I want you to keep in mind is that whenever we have a go and teach, the expectation is going to have a lag time. Right. We can accomplish the training, let's say a week from today, but the uh, the impact of that training it might take us a week or two. So we want to note that here and put this PDSA as the long term, because we're going to have that lag time of the impact to the yes, obstacle. Yes. Yeah. All right. And we asked that question, but we weren't. Sure, but now we know. Fantastic. And we'll need to update this to show 13. 13 of 22. So mm -hmm. let's do that right now then. Let's go ahead. That's great. Fantastic. All right. So what obstacles do you think are now preventing you from reaching the target condition? Whiteboards are not consistently updated each shift, and an estimated estimate of eight of ten whiteboards are being updated without encouragement from head nurse or nurse manager because boards are not updated Q shift patients family members are unaware of pain treatment so so coach uh, what is your opinion about this obstacle the weights written are we missing any information yes we're missing um, if it what process characteristic or process metric that it's tied to which is the whiteboard so tell us a little bit about the obstacle. What is the whiteboard? The whiteboard is this. It's a board like this in the patient's room. Okay. And it has um, on the bottom right hand corner we have smiley faces, frowning faces, because depending on the patient's educational level, with mm -hmm. numbers of anywhere from one to five or mm -hmm. zero to ten, mm -hmm. and they rate their pain. Okay. And when they rate the pain, the nurse is actually to circle the pain, the face that's there, and initial it. So it's all about pain management. Mm -hmm. So understanding the, the patient need around pain, pain, uh -huh. pain and, management. And when they do it, and when they put the whiteboard up there, they circle the pain level, okay. and then they put the last dose of pain medication and how often the patient can have it. Okay. So that way, when whoever walks in the room, just like Carter, can actually look at that board if that patient says, I'm having pain, whoever walks in that room can look at the board and say, Okay, I see that you have Toradol ordered every four hours, okay. and the last time you got it was an hour ago. So now we have three hours before we can give you any more medicine because there's nothing else ordered. So let's try to do these alternative methods. Perfect. So based on what you told me in this obstacle here, if we were to take this obstacle and put it anywhere between the process characteristics and the process metrics on the way to achieve the target condition, where will we put that obstacle in front of? What is this obstacle abstracting currently? Is it a process characteristic or a process metric? It's going to be more of a characteristic, I think. And if that's the case, which one uh, of the two that we currently have active will be the one that we're going to be affecting by this obstacle? Number one. Number one? Because we're not documenting the, the pain reassessment. All right. Because what, what they're not doing is they go in the morning, what's your pain level? They circle it. I see and what you're saying. And then when you give the medicine, it's still circuit. You still yes. Okay. And you're supposed to erase, circle again, initial and date and time what the reassessment. Perfect. So can we add that on the He's on the not, obstacle? Uh -huh. then? Beautiful. All right. All right. So what obstacles do you think are now preventing you from reaching the target condition? Okay. Based on chart audit, seventy percent of nurses are not going back to into patients' room to ask if their pain was relieved or if is better, thus not allowing for opportunities to offer pain, alternative pain relief options. Uh, 22 or 23 nurses are unaware of the 
importance of educating patients on outcomes of overuse of pain medication, thus causing an increased dependency on pain medication, a revolving door of patients seeking pain meds. Um, this one has been resolved. This one has evolved into this one, which means now we only have 13 or 22 nurses are educated on the chronic pain management policy and able to educate their patients who are receiving pain medications or alternative ways to treat and risk of overuse and the not decreasing the need of pain medication by the patient. So which one obstacle are you addressing now? Uh, we're still continuing the whiteboards are not consistently updated each shift and an estimate of 8 of 10 whiteboards are being updated without encouragement from the head nurse and nurse manager because boards are not updated with uh, Q shift, patient and family members are not aware of the pain treatment. So, quick coaching here, and to kind of save your time when you're going mm -hmm. through the coaching cycle. If you read all through those, you don't have to reread the the one that we're addressing <laughs> now. Just six. point at yes, or just uh, uh, point the you know uh, point at or okay. say number six. Okay. So, on this one, 22 or 23 nurses are unaware of importance of educating patients on outcomes of overuse of pain medication. Was that not part of the education? Yep. So do we not need to change this to 13 of 22? So in a way, the, the, the yes. obstacle has evolved, right? It has. From now, so. instead of having 22 out of 23, now we, we have done, get it down to 13 out of 23. Mm -hmm. Fantastic so, coaching. So Yes, so, that, so this can be checked, and it's gone down to 5 again. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Good job. All right, so let's go into the last question. So, um, what is your next step? Uh, perform whiteboard audits of each shift to see if patients with pain meds order will have the following pain scale updated, last time pain meds given, how often pain meds can be given, as well as ask patients if the usage of the whiteboard has been explained to and the why uh, by the nurses. So what do you expect? At least 50% of whiteboards on both floors will be updated, and 100% of patients will not know the purpose of the whiteboard because nursing has not explained it to them or family. When can we go and see what we um, have learned? Tom, uh, four. No, no today's the, it'll be nine. One nine. At about 11 o'clock. Okay. All right, good job.